From 1906 to 1940, the biggest food bioavailability disaster in history struck the United States. As an unknown illness spread throughout lower class neighborhoods, doctors frantically tried to find the origin of the infections. It affected over 3 million people and claimed the lives of at least 100,000 of them. The disease was diagnosed by the four Ds, dermatitis, diarrhea, dementia, and the big D word. The cause of this rapidly spreading illness was unknown, but doctors suspected it had something to do with the diet of the impoverished people it affected. Experiments were done to see if common molds found on corn were the cause, but these proved unsuccessful. Eventually, the true cause of the illness was found out, but to understand it, we need to start at the beginning. Today we're going to talk about one of the worst bioavailability problems in history and how what you don't know can hurt you. Corn is the most traded crop globally. In 2023, it was the most planted crop in the United States, which produced more than 500 million metric tons, one third of global corn production. The entire corn market is currently valued at over $143 billion and is projected to grow to over $166 billion by the year 2029. More corn is produced globally than wheat or rice. It's in our cereal, our snacks, our livestock feed, and even our cars are at least partially fueled by corn in the form of ethanol that's added to gasoline. And our apocalyptic space thrillers capitalize on corn's use as a reliable emergency crop that we can lean on during any global calamity. But there's a dark side of corn that most of us don't know about that caused the mysterious disease in the early 1900s. A dark side that highlights the importance of bioavailability of nutrients in the food that we eat on a daily basis. A dark side of corn called pellagra. But how did this all start? Prior to conquistadors bringing maize back to Spain in 1493, corn was exclusively part of early American cultures like the Olmec, Maya, and Inca. Current archaeological evidence tells us that it was first domesticated by indigenous peoples of southern Mexico about 9,000 years ago from a native grass called teosinte. Mexico cultivates 59 unique types of corn today, and sometime during its long history, indigenous peoples discovered that boiling corn in limestone bowls or with ash unlocked nutrients from the corn that are otherwise unavailable. Remember this part because we'll come back to it later. After the Spanish brought corn back to Europe, people realized very quickly that corn was easier to grow and produced more food per acre than rye and wheat. Because of this, corn rapidly spread to southern France, Italy, Romania, Russia, and Egypt. It was the main source of calories for poor communities, especially in the springtime, and wherever corn went, the disease now known as pellagra followed. But it's not what the Spanish brought back to Europe that was causing the spread of pellagra. It's what they didn't bring back. Flash forward to the year 1906. Some doctors realized that there's a mysterious disease spreading in mental hospitals and lower class neighborhoods across the United States. These people had common symptoms of pellagra, red rashes on their hands and around their necks, diarrhea, and dementia, and many of them passing away from advanced stages of the disease. Eventually, these symptoms became known as the four Ds, dermatitis, diarrhea, dementia, and th The first doctors to observe people with these symptoms originally thought that it was some form of leprosy. You know, leprosy, the disease from the Bible. With hundreds of thousands of reported cases of pellagra, states needed help, so they commissioned an investigation into pinning down the cause. They did experiments to try to link pellagra to molds that are commonly found on corn, but they couldn't get the molds to reproduce red rashes, diarrhea, dementia, or the unaliving of animals or humans. Eventually, a physician named Dr. Joseph Goldberger suggested that the diet of the poor might be linked to pellagra, a diet that consisted mainly of cornbread and molasses. And just like that, Goldberger started curing people and preventing new cases of pellagra from developing. He got federal funding to feed children at a pellagra-affected orphanage, a more varied diet including meat once a week and abundant milk. Cases of pellagra decreased and children got better, but as soon as federal funding ran out and the institutions went back to serving the old diets, infections continued. Yeast and liver were discovered to contain pellagra preventative factor, and both were used to treat people and dogs that had pellagra before the cause of pellagra was finally discovered in the 1940s. A nicotinic acid deficiency, which is now known as niacin or vitamin B3. So the pellagra preventive factor in yeast and liver was probably just niacin, vitamin B3. By the time a cure was found, over 3 million Americans got pellagra and over 100,000 had died from it. To make matters worse, there were scandals to try to put the blame on pathogens rather than a poor quality diet, the details of which we'll explore in a future video. The heavy reliance on corn in impoverished communities was largely to blame for the spread of pellagra. 
But if this is the case, how come pellagra was unheard of in Native American populations that relied on corn for millennia? The answer is an ingenious scientific process called nixtamalization. When corn was brought to Europe, people ate the grain, but they didn't bring back how the grain had been processed for millennia in Mesoamerica. The indigenous people discovered techniques of boiling corn in limestone pots or eventually with ash before making it a paste to make tortillas, tamales, or other goods made from nixtamalized cornmeal. Nixtamalization is an ingenious process because it makes niacin and tryptophan in corn bioavailable so our bodies can readily absorb the nutrients. This is thought to be the primary reason why Native American populations didn't suffer from pellagra. The truth is that the diet of people affected by pellagra did not just rely heavily on non nixtamalized corn, it was also a very restrictive diet in all the wrong ways, and often consisted only of cornbread, molasses, and the fattiest cuts of pork. And remember, a diet that included more meat and abundant dairy initially cured the infected children. It's important to note that corn, even nixtamalized corn, is known to bind with minerals in your body and prevent you from absorbing them from other foods. Most patients with pellagra had deficiencies of several other vitamins as well, and changing the diet to one that included more dairy, meat, liver, or yeast helped to reverse symptoms and lower instances of pellagra. The people who got pellagra pretty obviously didn't know how to properly process the corn they were eating to get sufficient amounts of niacin, which makes this one of the biggest, if not the biggest, bioavailability disaster in history, and an example of how what you don't know can definitely hurt you. The weird part is that while reading all about this, I realized that this very well could have happened to any of us. I used to eat polenta every day for lunch, and I had no idea that the corn I was eating wasn't really doing much for me at all because it wasn't nixtamalized. Corn in general is incredibly difficult for humans to digest, but most corn products like cereal, polenta, corn chips, and cornbread aren't made with nixtamalized corn. The next time you watch Interstellar, I want you to think about how everyone in the movie would probably have pellagra since the only thing to eat in their apocalyptic version of Earth was corn. So there you have it, a mysterious modern disease that didn't exist in native populations that knew how to properly process the grain that they bred and cultivated a disease caused by the problem of bioavailability of vitamins and minerals in plant foods. My takeaway from this is that when we read articles about how some nutrients aren't bioavailable in certain foods, we shouldn't dismiss it. We should do our own research and see if there's a specific way to process the food in order to get the nutrients that our bodies require. But what do you think? Do you think we could be facing any similar issues today? Is the story of Pellagra a cautionary tale? If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.